Hello, my eggy. Hello, my toasty. Hello, my stovetop pal. Sprinkle some salt and cheese. Fry me with bacon, please. Center of grand age, you'll need some bran flakes for your digestive flow. I heard your stomach groan, so eat me, I'm your toad. Wow! Whoa! Mmm, even. Okay. I'm Marty, or Martha, but mostly Marty. Um, I use they, them pronouns. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 21. So, you identify as non-binary? Yeah. Trans non-binary? Yeah. You, I'm trans. Yeah. You, <laughs> and non-binary. Did you know before, uh, like, how long did you know... And did you think about, um, you know, like, that you were non-binary or not cis, at least? Thinking, like, actively with those words, like, I'm non-binary? No. But or just thinking... have thoughts that mm -hmm. are trans yeah. or experiences? Um, I, I mean, I feel like I've always, I was definitely just a little boy. And I, like, felt that it wasn't like, what I look back and I'm, I was a little boy, like, when I was a child, I was like, I am a boy and want to be seen as a boy and dress like a boy. Um, but I didn't think about it in terms of pronouns. Well, I had no understanding because, like, there was no, um, I had nobody that I looked at that was non binary or trans. Right. So I didn't have any understanding that I, that, that type, that a community existed. Um, I just knew, like, that I felt like very boy. Mm -hmm. Like, and then I feel like the first time I really had a grasp on what it means to be non-binary is when I got here. Yeah. I didn't really even have an understanding in high school. That's because you met more non-binary people. Yeah. Yeah. It's because I met a bunch of non-binary people mm -hmm. and trans people yeah. all at once and was like immersed in it. Yeah. Like, oh, I get it. <laughs> I see. I see. Mm -hmm. gen I understand gender <laughs> now. Kind of. Yeah. yeah, no, I do. I think I do. Okay, so do you think that you're in your final state of evolving? <laughs> That's a hard question, obviously, because you're um, 21. But. No, probably not. I think I'm just going to be changed. I think I'm very, like, um, just non-conforming, like, and very... I, I feel more fluid. Mm -hmm. um, I feel... Like, I probably thought that when I was first, like, engaging with being non-binary, I thought that I was more, going to be more, like, singular in my queerness from then on. But now I'm, like, like accepting more femininity, femininity now. <laughs> and being like, oh, I'm, I'm super fluid. And I think that that's going to fluctuate throughout my life a lot. Mm -hmm. Um... I went to, like, a basketball camp when I was, I don't know, 10 or something. And because I was really into basketball. And it was, like, when we first got there, they divided us up, like, boys, girls. And I was very, like, I looked like a boy. So I was like, I'm a boy. I'm going to go with the boys. <laughs> and then I had everybody called me Marty I don't know if that's where I first got that nickname but that's when I remember first getting called Marty um and Enjoying it. well it was more just like none of you guys know mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys will never know <laughs> um anyways I then, <laughs> then I I assimilated <laughs> in, into the boys into and all my friends were the boys and I went and 
would practice with them. And then when I would have to go to the bathroom, like we, it, there'd be like bathroom breaks and I would go and I'd be like, you guys dare me to, to go into the girl's bathroom. Like, that would be so hard, wouldn't it? Like, that'd be so cool. And then I would like run into the girl's bathroom and pee really quick and then go out. Or when I went into the boys' bathroom, I remember one time peeing in the stall because like I couldn't pee in the urinal. I went into the stall and then I remember one of my friends like hopped up and he was like, why are you sitting down? And I was like, I don't know, that's so weird. That's so weird that I'm sitting down. And then I was like a few days into the camp. I think it was only like a week long. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the counselors came up to me and was like, Marty, I see that you on your papers, it says that you're a girl, but you say you're a boy. What do you feel like you are? I was like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. I'm literally busted. This is hell. And I was like, I'm a boy. And then my mom picked me up and like, of course, the counselors had talked to her and she was sort of like, hey, I heard about this thing. And I was like, yeah, I can never go back there. And then I just didn't go back. And that was really the end of it. And I think my mom wasn't as was in my childhood, not familiar with like, I think she just had no expectation to raise a trans kid or, or I had no expectation of transness like she accepted me for who I was but it wasn't in a way where she like had a grasp like oh maybe this kid is trans um so that she was sort of like okay you don't have to go back yeah and did that nickname Marty like stick anywhere else um not really it's sort of like most people called me Martha um but when I got to high school, I think I told my friends that story and they were like, Marty. And then some of my friends and yeah, some of my friends would call me Marty. Mm-hmm. And then here, I think I was mostly going by Martha. Like nobody really knew that I even really went by Marty. And then yeah, that's how I met you. Martha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There were only a couple people who occasionally called me Marty. I think this year is, like, the first year I'm going by Marty here. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely been weird. Like, I don't fully know. I feel like not totally, totally tied to anything I'm going by right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of using it so that people have something to call me if I'm walking by them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Is there anything else that you would like to say? Are you looking at the camera? Yeah. Just put on your headphones. Be who you are. No, no. <laughs> All right. Okay.今天天气真好你知道我朋友的女兒剛拿到哈佛獎學金嗎?No。他父母都搬到波士頓了,是不是很幸運啊?我也真希望我們能搬到波士頓。What? Why don't you ever ask me how my day is?
We lit turn her always. I mean, Iris sleeves can turn at me and never stand gallop older. The mall? Like American moms lister at their golfer, but you, you darn not love and buy to care. 没错，我又不是在这，在这里生的。我又不是美国妈妈，我是中国人。No, turn corner I not to get me. In raw towel culture, okay, it's raw prune and fracked in my mental health. 你都不了解中国文化，我怎么能了解美国文化的什么心理健康啊？ Okay, like sure,、uh, fair, open, or per when you're gordable, but when you're only seamless, her range and railing, I feel red, really red. You just question yourself. You never understand. 强迫我接受你的美国意见 What What do you run tumor? Forbid, Bruce. Let Iris not turn Chinese. Okay, so that when hole is poured and let her spend your American dollar. 我永远都不是好妈妈。Oh, you don't understand me. I hate you. Thank、you.
Mama would caption or write captions to every picture using white India ink and a special pen, and she'd have to dip it in the ink and then write. Oh, my God. Yep. Allison leaving for a birthday party in her gray nylon party dress, pink trimmed, her Christmas doll. I remember that. You look so cute. (laughs) Oh, my God. You look exactly like you do now. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You do. I'm serious. You're such a Really, you do. Oh, my God. Read this one. One of life's darkest moments. We must... We just... We just got the car back yesterday after six weeks in the garage for body work after Bill's accident when Gordon... Applied this axe handle to the rear window. Yep. <gasps> and look, she made it. Oh right my there. gosh. <laughs> and take a picture. Oh my god. Oh my god. Three, but we three, love him just the same. Three, four, five, six, oh, seven. mommy he hugs four. her darling Gordon on his fourth birthday. Mm. What a good mom. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, this David being held. <laughs> Mommy's holding him. Oh. Olga and Chicks on Nono's fourth birthday. David is two and a half. Mm. I remember this car. It was a Ford. It was black. April 14th, a lovely breezy April day. Gordon fondles a gift pistol (laughs) and models his new green corduroy slacks from Nana Courier. Mm. Mm. We gone for a walk down our country road on this lovely spring day. Gordon strolls. David rides. We took turns pulling as Bill just returned from his hospital after his disco discogram. discogram. See, my dad had a back surgery and he had to wear this um, Brace? Pla- plaster. No, a cast. Oh. Like, you know, like a cast on your arm. He had a body cast all summer. Oh my and gosh. And they cut a hole here for ventilation, but it was so hot. Oh, oh. my God. I remember that. Bill models the latest in body casts. He has to wear this another three months. Oh my gosh. The four little water rats dripping yeah. wet. <laughs> look at my bathing cap. You're so cute. <laughs> uh, oh, oh my god, look at you. Our sweetheart is seven. Oh, it's it's your birthday now. How many years ago was that? Seven, oh my god. 60, or 63. 65, 65 years 65 ago? 65 years ago. Wow. Her mummy made her this polished cotton dress printed with blue and navy corn flowers and black velvet ribbon bound. I took the day off from work to give her a little party. Oh. Oh. Mm. Oh my gosh. That's really, that's crazy. I know. And here you are now. I was walking on the street the other day. It was when the city was clear and lovely, and there was nothing else in my mind. I passed by people having good coffee on the terrace, passed by restaurants serving fine wines and no oysters, by a lady who might have a racing paper in hand, and a marshal who had fought his battles. Then I saw what seemed to be an antique shop with the paint on the wall peeling off like impressionist's canvas, and a window filled with weird and wonders. I could not do anything else but to walk in. A little old man with curly mustache sat in the corner. Welcome to the outland of memories and my orange cat. We sell breaths of bards and amulets against the lost. So take your time here, my dear traveler. I saw there were photos of people who had long been buried. There were poems and proses sheltering one soul after another. A silver bell that fairies used to call their friends in the forest. A brass telescope through which one saw the distant death. Heart that once beat in the hope for tomorrow. Love that one never told the wind but was forever engraved in the sunset. Then I saw something gleaming on the wall, 
calling and alluring me to its embracement. It was an exquisite Asian mirror. I approached, looked in, and the one inside was looking back. I saw her smiling, reacting, acting. A figure, a shape, an essence. What was I seeing when I was seeing? I saw the bosom of wishes guiding a way of escape. I was a broken galaxy, a boat of bones sailed in between. I saw envoy of a dream who sees and believes in the darkness. I was the dimly discernible, cheer to the wave, and an end without the end.